425 with the with Alexi. So um, yeah, keep contributing. I'm gonna we're gonna shift topics now to something a little bit more um, depressing and serious. I think you all know what happened in Paris. Um, what was it now? A couple of weeks ago, or 11 days ago, when um, when a French teacher in discussing freedom of speech with his students. Uh, wait a minute, let me just uh, make sure I get these questions. Uh, when discussing freedom of speech with the students, chose to show the students uh, two cartoons of Muhammad, two cartoons of Muhammad that had been published by Charlie Hebdo, the French magazine whose, uh, whose 11 members of the staff were murdered when, uh, it, you know, what was in 2015, January of 2015. And before showing the cartoons, he, he told the students what he was going to do. He, he said that if there were any students who, who, who thought they would be offended by the sight of Muhammad cartoons, they could leave the class or they could turn their head or they could do whatever was necessary not to be offended. So he, he took all the precautions that you would take with, I guess, students, young, young kids. And, uh, and he showed the cartoons. Uh, to the students. I think uh, a day or two later, maybe it was the same day, I'm not sure. I think it was a day or two later. A, um, an Islamist showed up, found this teacher, and basically beheaded him in, pa in France. Beheaded him. Uh, uh, on Twitter, the assailant wrote, quote, I have executed one of the dogs from hell who dared to put Muhammad down. So, just horrific. Just horrific, but consistent. Remember, oh my God, now we're gonna have to do some, um, we're gonna have to do some uh, currency exchange. We've got 150 um, New Zealand dollars. All right, somebody's gonna have to take out the calculator and figure that one out. It, I'll just tell you that YouTube does not use a friendly exchange rate. <laughs> Put it that way. Thank you, uh, JDS. Um, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, this topic is tough to do when, you, when you're also trying to raise money. So uh, remember that, uh, you know, this beheading this, this horrific murder is not, of course, the first occurrence that had to do with cartoons and had to do with violence. I mean, the essential character, character of this goes back to Salman Rushdie, I think it was 1989, who published, uh, published a book. Uh, and as a consequence of that book, as a consequence of that book, um, a fatwa was placed on his head. He published a book. Um, and right now, the name of the book, of course, slips my mind. And uh, a fatwa was placed on his head, that is a death warrant, was placed on his head by the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran. And uh, almost nobody, nobody stood up for him. Almost nobody defended him. Indeed, George Bush Sr., who was president at the time, completely defaulted in his responsibility. Satanic Verses, thank you, the book was called Satanic Verses. Because the book dealt with Islam in supposedly an unfriendly way, um, it, a price was placed on his head. Uh, murderers were sent out to kill him. Bookstores were attacked. The publisher was attacked. Uh, governments around the world did very little to protect, protect publishers, authors, bookstores, the Wassilians. And I'll include in the governments that didn't do very much to protect it, the United States of America. So the one role that government has in cases like this is to protect the rights of the person who speaks to speak, to protect him from those who would silence him. And government defaulted on that responsibility. They defaulted on that responsibility during the Salomon Rushdie case, and then again they defaulted on that responsibility. Over and over again over the years, whenever is the issue of Islam came out, the response of the government, whether it was Bush Sr., Bush Jr., Obama, or many of the others, the response of the government was, well, you really shouldn't attack Islam. 
you really, you really should, be, should be nice. It's really not nice. Now you have a right to speech, but you really shouldn't do it. Please be nice. Please be nice. Nobody actually said, go to hell. You don't like my views? Don't listen. Turn the channel. Read another book. Use another magazine. Of course, all this came to a head in 2015 when a Danish magazine, oh, there's Troy. Troy's going to... Troy's going to end this quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. That is 500 Australian dollars. Somebody, again, is going to have to do the math. Uh, it's getting complicated now. It's getting complicated, but, uh, but we'll get an update uh, from John soon in terms of what this all adds up to. But, but thanks, guys. This is truly fantastic. So in 2015, a Danish uh, magazine published th the famous, now infamous, Danish cartoons. Riots broke out all over the Middle East. Pakistan, Bangladesh, all over the Middle East. Embassies were burnt. People were murdered. Why? Because Muhammad had been insulted. Why? Because a cartoon of Muhammad had been displayed. You can display cartoons of Jesus, of Abraham, of L. Ron Hubbard, and nobody cares. But if you display cartoons of Muhammad, that is blasphemy. And that is punishable by death. By death. And so riots broke out. And people died. People died. The cartoonists were threatened. The publication was threatened. The cartoonists, I think, in Denmark still live in fear, particularly after what happened in 2015. Sorry, uh, Danish cartoons were in 2004 or 5. Uh, and then the, the Charlie Hebdo was in 2015. In 2015, what we got was Charlie Hebdo, Islamists walking into the offices after another publication of, Dan of cartoons. And what we got was the murder of 11, 11 cartoonists and journalists at Charlie Hebdo. Now we have this murder of this young teacher in Paris. And to the credit of Macron, the French president, to the credit of the French government, they have not given in. They have not folded. They have stood up to the barbarians. They have said that it's absolutely an issue of free speech, the ability to show the cartoons. They have not done a George Bush or an Obama or even Trump. They have gone all out in defense of one's ability, in the defense of teachers, in the defense of magazines to show these cartoons. Now, they're not always this Positive. I mean, Charlie Hebdo suffered significantly from French authorities because it pushed the boundaries of what French authorities considered speech. But on this issue right now, France is going all out in defense of the teacher and in defense of its tradition of publishing cartoons, of making fun of religion, of making fun of religious figures, even Islamic religious figures. And the response is, Turkey, is, Turkey you know, whose president is an Islamist, Turkey, an ally member that is more aligned with the Islamists, the enemies of the West, the enemies of civilization. Turkey, run by Erdogan. Erdogan now has insulted the French, called Macron crazy, and France has withdrawn its embassy from Turkey. I think Turkey has withdrawn its ambassador from France. This ambassador, not the embassy. There are riots now in Bangladesh, in Morocco, in Pakistan, all across Northern Africa. The Muslims, just like in 2004-5, or is it 5-6? Anyway, 
uh, in the mid-2000s on the rampage. There will be people killed. There will be people injured. Hopefully. Hopefully, Stan stands up to this barbarism. Hopefully. Stan commits itself to defending its values, commits itself to defending free speech. And if you really, if you really think about it, if you understand what makes the West the West, what makes civilization civilization, there is no more important issue than this issue. There is no more important issue than free speech. If we can't speak, if we can't communicate, if we can't challenge each other, if we can't push each other, if we can't reveal or express to each other new truths, new ideas, good or bad, wrong or true, then we cannot anymore find truth. If we cannot offend, when we cannot offend, then we cannot find truth. If we cannot offend, then we can't really have a conversation. The fact is that every new truth offends somebody. Every new truth offends somebody. Every new truth is viewed by somebody usually the incumbent, the one who holds the incumbent view that you are challenging, as offensive, wrong, no good. Huh. Uh. Wow, we're still going. We've reached well over a thousand and we're still going thank you guys this is fantastic this is fantastic all right we're well over two thousand in terms of money raised today so thank you everybody i mean we can keep going i'm 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 game for ten thousand i'm certainly game for ten thousand and we should do this on a monthly basis because this is this is good this is good this is a way to make a living so if we value reason if you value thinking, if you value discovery of truth, if you value science, if you value innovation, then speech, free speech, is necessary. It's a must. Then free speech is what allows us to challenge each other, to present each other with new ideas, to push each other. And yes, part of the speech is going to be really, really dumb, stupid, wrong, maybe even really, really, really badly wrong. But again, the only way to success it's to allow for the wrong speech, not because we value wrong speech, because we value the truth, and we do not want to give. What we do not want to do is give the authorities the power to dictate what is and what isn't acceptable, what is and isn't offensive, what is and isn't valuable truth. Remember, Galileo offended the Catholic Church. Uber offends taxi drivers. Every innovation offends so, very little in life is as valuable as our freedom of speech. All right. Okay, uh, let's see. What are we going to do? And therefore, uh, we need to be on France's side. Now, if we had, again, a, a president who had an understanding of what's going on in the world, then a real issue right now would be to stand up with France, to issue a statement in defense of France and condemning 
the barbarism of, of, uh, of Islamism that wants to silence all opposition and silence all opposition through the use of a sword. Remember, speech, in spite of what the left, some people on the left, and in spite of what the Islamists tell you, speech is not violence. Offending something is not punching them in the face. Those are not equivalent things. You don't have to listen. You can walk away. You can't walk away when somebody is punching you. I mean, you can try to run away, but if they're chasing you, that is violence. Violence is unaccepted. Speech should be defended. And, and kudos to the French for standing up for free speech. I wish we could say the same for this country. So many on the left want to give it up. And so many on the right don't value it and don't see the importance of it. And that's where we are as freedom slips away. All right. We have a lot of Super Chat questions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take the Super Chat questions, see how long we have. And if there's time, we'll, we'll take on the second topic. But uh, if there isn't, we'll just end with Super Chat questions, and I'll do the other topic about uh, Biden versus Trump. We can do that over the weekend before the election, I promise. Um, let me note that um, we are at $1,429. The challenge was to go get to a thousand, and we, we, we've achieved that. So we've got we've got another thousand mats. So we've raised almost two thousand five hundred dollars. Of course, we can keep going. We could keep going, uh, and there's another five bucks. And uh, you you know, if you want to ask a question, I will take super chat questions. So uh, keep keep uh, going with the super chat, and we'll keep uh, I'll keep copying over the the questions and. Be ready to, um, I'll be ready to uh, answer them as we move forward. Um, I will say, this issue with the uh, Islam and the cartoons and the French, this is to be watched. This is really important to watch it and, and to see who stands with them and who stands against them, which countries, which politicians. This is one of the most important issues of our day, this issue of hate speech, uh, which, which the left, uh, you know, the kind of the, the, um, the uh, far left would like to get rid of free speech in the United States. Well, we're seeing that battle now uh, manifest itself on the Islamic front, but it's the same battle. Hate speech is hate speech is hate speech. And uh, here, uh, you know, mostly the left is focused on gender and other issues, but it's the same issue. And, you know, we need to do whatever we can to, uh, to defend, to fight on this issue. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. 
And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.